heart of Bergen Gully. Folks, we do have a few formalities that we might attend to. I might ask you to move back down because I might actually jump underneath there. I've also got some uh, umbrellas in the back of the car if you want to grab them to hand out. Folks, the way I propose to conduct today's auction is in the very normal manner. I'm going to make reference to the contracts that you'll be required to start in the event you're the successful uh, purchaser of the property. I'd like to, of course, say a few brief words about the property and we'll get to the business end of the day where we submit the property and call for your bidding. Folks, the contracts are sale the standard and straightforward, published and printed by the Law Institute Victoria in conjunction with the REIB. And they contain the particular sale schedule, the general conditions and any special conditions that apply to a sale by public auction. My vendor sells you as the purchaser by both the property and the chattels for the price and upon the conditions as set out within the contract. Folks, I'm offering the property under what's commonly referred to as a Schedule 1 auction. It allows for vendor bidding. It prohibits co-owner bidding. And by law, I can tell you that today's auction is to be conducted in accordance with the rules and any additional conditions that were made available for inspection prior to the start of today's auction. The auction rules prohibit me as an auctioneer from accepting bids or offers for the property after I've knocked the property down to the successful bidder. The vendors have a reserved price. I will indicate bidders upon request. The law prohibits false bids. It prohibits major disruptions by bidders. And it prohibits bidders attempting to prevent others from bidding. And it provides fines for this conduct. The rules permit vendor bids. The words that I'm going to use during the course of today's auction to indicate that I'm making a vendor bid Quite simply, the words vendor bid, folks, and by law, only I as your auctioneer can make a vendor bid. So there's the legalities out of the way. Folks, the contracts have been on display for half an hour prior to today's proceedings. I primarily take the documentation as being read. I will make reference to the particulars of sale. However, they tell us the vendor's selling agent to be Philip Webb, Proprietary Limited, at 139 Marunda Highway in Ringwood. The vendor that I'm acting for today, Lawrence Anthony Sheen, at 42 Loretto Avenue, Furniture Gully. Vendor's legal practitioner, folks, the good people that have prepared the paperwork for today's auction, is Argyle Conveyancing Services, the Proprietary Limited of 1802 Furniture Gully Road in Furniture Gully. The purchaser, of course, is yet to be decided, and we only have one provision, ladies and gentlemen, for one lucky purchaser's name to be inserted into the contract. If it's your intention to be the proud new owner of this beautiful property, it's going to need to be your name that appears there. The land that I sell is described in the attached copy of title. Piece, give a title reference, volume 8350, folio 505, being lot 552 on the registered plan 053088. The property addresses the land together with any improvements known to you, to me and the posty, of course, as number 42 Loretto Avenue in Fern Tree Gully. The goods that remain with the property are all fixed floor coverings, light fittings, window furnishings, and all fixtures and fittings of a permanent nature. Folks, we have no exclusions to today's sale. Our clients will, of course, remove their personal effects, but as far as all fixtures and fittings are concerned, there's certainly no exclusions to the sale. The price, of course, is yet to be decided. However, in the event you're the successful purchaser of this property, I'm going to require a deposit equal to that of 10% of the purchase price. I will accept a bank cheque, personal cheque, and if you're driven here today with a boot full of cash, I'll gladly and happily take that off your hands as well. Folks, the uh, balance of the purchase monies, we have fairly flexible terms for you today. We're offering 30, 60, 90 days. So we've got great flexibility around those settlement terms. And of course, the settlement will be the date upon which we offer you vacant possession of this property, namely upon acceptance of title and payment of the full and complete purchase price. Contracts will be dated today's date. So there's the paperwork out of the way. Folks, the vendor's statement is attached and included to our contract. It forms the back half, indeed, of our contract. And without giving you a boring description of the documentation, particularly given the, uh, the uh, weather and its current condition, uh, there's certainly nothing contained within that paperwork that should give you anything other than great confidence to bid here today and to bid with complete and full confidence. So it gives the property a very clean bill of health. We have had a few questions. We have a land size frontage uh, on the Loretto Avenue of uh, around about 56 feet. We have a depth of 142 feet. Uh, so for those of us that like to speak in the square metre each, we're at about 740 thereabouts square metres of land. Our zoning, again, a very important point. We're in a GRZ2 zoning, folks. So, uh, again, an important thing to consider that your protection uh, or the investment that you're making here today is certainly protected under that type of zoning. 
the uh, Knox City rates are looking for a contribution of about $2,200 uh, uh, per annum. The uh, South East Water are going to require a contribution of about $892.76 per annum, plus uh, consumption by measure, of course. Now, the rules, rules that apply to a sale by public auction, folks, they're fairly simple and straightforward. And uh, if you've bid at public auction before, I do apologise in advance if we bore you. However, for those of you that today's the first time that you're bidding, as your auctioneer, I can make one or more bids on behalf of my vendor at any time throughout the course of the auction today. I can refuse any bid. I can determine the amount by which the bidding is to be advanced. I can refer a bid to my client at any time prior to the conclusion of the auction. Equally, I can withdraw the property at any time prior to the conclusion of the sale. Folks, in the event we have a disputed bid, and it's a pretty rare occurrence, but in the event we have a disputed bid, we'll do one of two very simple things. We're going to resubmit the property for last and highest undisputed bid. We'll very simply start the bidding off again. And if a reserve price has been set for a property, in this case I have very clear reserve instructions. If we don't quite reach our reserve, I'll make it clear that I will only negotiate with those parties that in fact hold the highest bid. So folks, it's a simple formula for success at a public auction. If I reach the reserve, I will declare the property on the market to the highest bidder when the hammer falls, I sell. If we don't quite reach reserve, folks, and uh, you have the uh, highest bid, I will pass the property into you and I will give you the first opportunity to negotiate with my vendors to secure the purchase of the property. So there you have it, folks. Very simple, very straightforward. I summarise it for you. Sell subject to my vendor's reserve price to the highest bidder. We call for a deposit equal to 10% of the purchase price. We're offering a very flexible settlement term, 30, 60 or 90 days from today's date. We're calling for a deposit equal to 10%. We're offering vacant possession of this property. Folks, before I proceed any further, are there any questions that I can help you with? Well, we'll take it from your silence that we've covered things quite adequately and quite clearly for you and that you've had the opportunity throughout the course of uh, the marketing cam I know, campaign. I know Andrew Gardner has met many of you at the front door and uh, we'll hope that he's been able to answer any of the questions that you may have regarding the property or indeed the paperwork that you'd be required to sign. Folks, before I submit the property, I'd firstly like to start by thanking our owners for selecting us to market the property and handle the sale for them. I've got to say, this has been one of those labours of love our current vendors in fact built this home some 11 years ago and it's a purpose built home as you can probably tell if you've had a, a, an opportunity of walking through the property and seeing the floor plan. It uh, certainly has been designed to accommodate dual family living. So folks whether you are looking at this property from an investment point of view certainly make a wonderful investment. You've got seven bedrooms in total that you could potentially be letting out with this property. You've got three bathrooms but it's the dual and the separate living that really starts to add value to this property, in my opinion, and makes it very sought after and very unique. I doubt very much whether there's something similar on the market right now. In fact, I'm pretty certain there's not. So if you're looking for something, perhaps, where you can have some elderly parents move in, you can help keep an eye on them. It's nice and level. They've got their own space. It's completely separate. They have their own kitchen, laundry facilities, the bathroom, two bedrooms. It's a wonderful place. Alternatively, in fact, you may have perhaps some adult teenage children that are going to be living with you. And again, it's a great place for them to stay while they're perhaps saving a deposit for their own property. Again, the property itself, a further five bedrooms. So it's a substantial home. It's a great family property. It's been built with love. It's been built with purpose. Our vendors no longer have a use for this home. So it is one lucky party's opportunity to be able to secure something where all the hard work, all the thought, has gone into the design, the planning and the construction. Around about 11 years old, as I said, folks, and uh, certainly very well positioned in a uh, no-through road that we're currently standing in here. Folks, I'll keep moving. I know it's miserable, it's wet out there, so I'm not going to bore you any further. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here to sell it. Our vendors have set what I believe to be quite a realistic reserve price on this property, and I think it offers a wonderful opportunity. So I'm going to put it to you, folks, number 42 Loretto Avenue, here in the heart of Ferntree Gully. Who'd like to buy it, ladies and gentlemen? Who wants to start me off with a bidder and offer? Who's going to be the brave soul to get us away? It's a pretty miserable old day to just be able to see an auctioneer in, uh, in full flight. Who'd like to start us off with an opening bidder and offer? Folks, where do we go and what do we say? I've got to say, it doesn't matter whether I've got a crowd of 20 or a crowd of 200. You call for that opening bid, it's pretty elusive. It's a hard thing to, uh, to get people to do. Folks, I'm going to kick it off with a vendor bid at 900000 at 900,000 folks, I think it represents pretty good value. That I'm going to invite you in for $20,000 advances. At 900,000 folks, we'll take an advance to 20 to 920 if you like. 
Pet 920, 900,000, they're going to be called 20 in the rise. Pet 900,000, we'll take an advance of 20 anywhere now at all. Pet 900,000, they're going to be say 20, can I say 20 in the rise? Pet 900,000, it'll be great buying, folks, whether you're looking at it for extended in law accommodation, whether you're looking at it from an investment point of view, it certainly makes sense and absolutely makes great sense. At 900,000, I'm not your competition, I'm not here to buy it, folks. 900 is going to be called for an advance of 20 anywhere at all. At 900,000, then it'll be all out, done and silent, I won't waste your time, folks. If you're not here to buy, it's a pretty miserable day to be standing out there with your umbrellas, folks. I'm going to put it to you, so you're sure and so I'm sure. 900,000 is going to be called 20 in the rise, then we all out, done and silent. 900 is going to be 20 to play if you like. At 900,000, then, folks, I'm going to count you out once. At 900,000 the bid. Once. At 900,000 the bid. Third and final call, folks, while you're holding your umbrellas. If you don't have a free hand, pop your umbrella up in the air. I'll take what I can get. At 900,000 the bid. You call 20 in the rise. Are you done? Are you silent? I'm going to take a further vendor bid to 950,000, and that's it for me. At 950, I invite you back for 20. At 950, the bid will be safe. 29.70, you're all done. Are you silent at 950,000 the bid? At 20, there should be a tsunami of hands at this price. At 950,000, then it'll be all out. Are we done? Are we silent? The bid's at 950 and we call for an advance at 20. Are you done? Are you silent? And again, I'll count you out, folks, so you're sure. So I'm sure. 950 is the bid, then we count you out. Once at 950,000 the bid. Twice at 950,000 the bid. Third and final call, folks. You all done? Are you silent? Finished and done at 950. No better bid. All done. All silent. Well, folks, I'm just going to quickly refer that to my clients to give them an opportunity to know where we're at. I won't keep you waiting too long. I'll be back out to resubmit in two minutes. Thanks for your patience, ladies and gentlemen, and indeed on a day like today, I do appreciate you hanging about. I thought most of you might have done a runner by the time I came out. Folks, my instructions are clear. I'm going to put it back to you for three further calls. Within the absence of any further bidding, ladies and gentlemen, I will pass the property in on a vendor bid at 950. You won't be bidding against me if you do intend to bid, and certainly if you'd like the opportunity to negotiate with my vendor, now would be the time that you pop your hand up. I'm calling for 20s. The bid's at 950, folks. I put it back to you. The three calls and only three calls. 950 is the bid, ladies and gentlemen. We'll take a rise at 20 anywhere now. Are you all done and silent? No better bid. 950 is going to be called 20 to 970,000. If you'd like an opportunity to talk to the vendor, now's the time to bid, folks. It's the halfway point. It's the pointy and serious end of an option. 950,000. Then we're going to count you all out. Once at 950,000. Twice at 950,000. Third and final call. Are you all done? Are you silent? Andrew, I'll give you a moment. It looks like you have somebody that might like to bid. They can pop their hand up. They can throw the umbrella in the air. I'll take what I can get. 950 is to bid. We're calling for 20, Andrew. 970 if they'd like to participate. A great opportunity. 950 is to bid. Are they in or out, Andrew? Need to know. I'm going to call it three times and only three times. Last opportunity at 950 to be called 20 to 70. Are you done? Are you silent at 950,000? Then once at 950. Twice at 950. Third and final call. Are you all out? Done? Silent? Andrew, look at me. Tell me whether they're in or out. Need to know. Don't want to prolong it. People are getting wet. At 950. Call it 70, sir, madam. What do you say? You won't buy without a bid. 
970 the bid. At 970, I tell you what, that was one of the hardest bids I've ever had to pull. Welcome to the bidding, sir, madam. At 970, then it'd be your bid. At 970, we take 20 and a further 20 to 90 if you like. At 970, then it'll be your bid. At 970,000, then we take 20 to 90. At 970,000, then it'll be your bid. At 970, then it'll be safe. 990 now. At 970,000, then are you all out? Are you done? Are you silent at $970,000? No better video, you all done and so At 970, I'm going to count you out. Once at $970,000. Twice at $970,000. Third and final call. Are you all out? Are you done? Are you silent at $970,000? No better bid. All done. All silent. Well, folks, I will just refer that bid to my vendor and come back with a further instruction. Yeah, again, thank you for your patience, ladies and gentlemen. Again, uh, as you can appreciate, it's a big decision come the day of auction, and this has been a, uh, a family endeavour, and the family are all involved. At 970, folks, confirm your bid at 970. Your bid at 970, folks. My instructions are I'm going to put it back to you again for three and only three calls. So if you want an opportunity, if I don't get a further bid, I'm going to pass the property to you, sir, madam. I'm going to invite you in, and I'm going to do my very best to help you buy this wonderful property. I've got to tell you, at 970, you probably couldn't replace the property in terms of its land value, in terms of the size of the home. And I'm offered 970,000. We're down to 20s. At 970,000, we'll take an advance of 20 to 990 if you like. I'm going to put it back to you. And again, in the absence of any further bidding, I'm going to do my best to help you buy it. At 970,000, the bid, I'm going to put it back to you now. At 970, the bid will be called 20 to 990. Are we all done? Are we all silent at 970,000, the bid? I'll count you out then once at 970,000 the bid. Twice at 970,000 the bid. Third and final call. Are you all out? Are you done? Are you silent at 970,000? No better bid. Done. All done at $970,000. No better bid. Well, ladies and gentlemen, sir, madam, I officially pass the property into you. I'm going to do my best to help you buy it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attendance here today. We wish you the very best and drive carefully in the wet conditions.